Well, good day to you and welcome back. Today's video is about the abacus once again. We've done a whole series of abacus videos in the past. There's a playlist down below for you to check out. Most of the operations that we've covered in the past on the abacus were related to addition. There is one of them up here you might want to check out. But we really haven't covered subtraction or division very much, and so I want to get into that today. Mainly, we're going to talk about division. So Kojima who documented the modern abacus methods in his original book back in the 1950s, talked about the modern way of doing division was essentially long division, very similar to the way you would do it on paper by hand. So we're going to touch a little bit about that long division method, but we really want to get into the older method of division, which is repetitive subtraction. This method of division works really well for larger size numbers, multi-digit numbers. And that's what we're going to cover today. Stay tuned. So this is Kojima's book that I knew when I was young. The first edition is April 1954. This particular version was the 23rd printing in 1968. Then more recently, this is the 34th printing that was printed in 1991. And also, there is a second edition or a second volume called Advanced Abacus Theory and Practice. These were published by the Charles E. Tuttle Company, and this particular cover is the one that I remember having as a kid. So in the 1950s, Takashi Kojima began documenting the modern abacus technique using the latest methods to give you the fastest operation. Now, the method of division that he talks about in this book is a variation on the long division method that we do using paper and pencil. One of the problems with that technique is you have to estimate how many times your divisor goes into the dividend. And you could misguess and you might overshoot, and so you'll have to do a correction. The way we did it in the old days on paper was like this. Let's say we had 127 divided by 5. So what you have to do is figure out how many times the divisor goes into the first digit, which it doesn't. It's smaller than the first digit. So we go to the first two digits, and I'm going to do a little guess in my head that if I know my multiplication tables, I'll know that 5 times 2 is 10, so I'm going to put 2 up here. I write that. I do the subtraction. I carry down the 7, and then I do the same thing. How many times will 5 go into 27? Well, because I know my multiplication tables for single-digit numbers, it's pretty easy to know that it's 5 times, and there you got a remainder of 2. You bring down the 0, 5, Oh, I know that it's going to be 4, because I know my multiplication tables, and that is my quotient, 25.4. But this whole technique is dependent upon me mentally knowing the multiplication tables for 5, for instance, and being able to accurately guess how many times it goes into each part of the dividend. Well, let's try a larger problem, 347 divided by 139. So I'm going to first of all have to figure out how many times 139 goes into 347. Here's our decimal point. And I'm going to guess maybe three times. Let's see. Um, but I'm going to have to go off here on the side and do a test multiplication. 417, it overshoots. So this is only going to be two times. So now I have to go back and do 139 times 2. 278, as you can see, do the subtraction, 69, and then we're going to have to bring down the next zero. And now I'm going to have to figure out how many times is 139 going to 690. Well, now it's like mm, maybe five times. So I'm going to have to do a test multiplication. 695, Oh, so it goes in four times. Well, shoot, so 556, and then you do continue the operation from there. So the problem you can see is you have all these sidebar multiplications that you have to do in order to figure out how many times the divisor goes into the dividend. You have to do all of these side multiplications, which you can do on paper 
not a big problem. It just takes up more paper. But doing it on the abacus, you know, you've laid out your dividend and your divisor, and then you build up the quotient between them. But you may not have room unless you have a really huge abacus to actually do these sidebar multiplications. And the technique that Kojima refers to in his book, if you overshoot in one of your estimates, you have to go back and correct it, which becomes kind of a cumbersome problem. This long form of division works okay with small numbers where you know your multiplication tables by heart. But when you get to be longer, bigger numbers, more digits, it gets to be cumbersome. You have to do all this sidebar calculations to figure out where you're at on each step. And it's for that reason that I want to talk about a different method of division. Well, it wasn't until I got this Marchant pinwheel calculator that I discovered the alternate method of division that's used on these kind of calculators is actually repetitive subtraction. So let's take an example of uh, 355, for instance. And now I'm going to divide it by 113. Right, so the way this works is I just do repetitive subtraction until the remainder is smaller than the 113, and then I move the carriage one row to the left and keep doing it. So now I go back and I keep doing it. That is an approximation of pi. I got 3.141592. I got pi out to six decimal places just by repetitive subtraction. And so what struck me was the idea that, well, maybe I can use this repetitive subtraction technique on the abacus. Now, subtraction is like an inverse operation of addition. And just like with addition on the abacus, there are four different types of problems you might encounter. So let's review the operational mapping of how to do subtraction on the Soroban. Okay, so this is our Soroban abacus subtraction operation mapping. We did a similar one of these for addition in one of the previous videos. So this big chart here basically shows you the menu end are these numbers on the left column. This is the number you're starting with. And the subterhand are these numbers in the top row. That is the number that you're going to be subtracting from the menu end, and the result is the difference. So we'll start with direct subtraction. All these problems that are listed in yellow with a D mean that you can directly do them without any other manipulations. So for instance, down here on the if you start with seven, you can directly subtract one, two, five, six, or seven because a seven is represented as a single five bead and two one beads below it, but you can't directly subtract a three or a four from seven because you don't have three or four one beads to subtract. The same thing with the eight and the nine. And so if you can't directly do a subtraction problem, you have to do a fives complement problem, which is identified in the teal boxes. If you can't do that, you have to do a tens complement number, which is in pink. And you'll notice all of these in the upper right half of the graph are indicated with a asterisk. And this assumes that all of these operations involve two digit numbers at least, because on these boxes, the subtrahend would be larger than the menu end like one minus five, for instance, we're not going to deal with negative numbers. So we're just assuming there's another column of beads to the left. So you have at least a 10 bead to the left of it. So tens complement problems are indicated in pink or salmon. And then if you can't do those, there is combined complementary problems that involves both fives and tens. Those are in indicated here in green. So let's look at exactly how that works. Okay, welcome to Abacus Subtraction Problem Evaluation. So, the first thing you're going to do is ask yourself the question, can you directly subtract the subtrahend? If yes, do so. You've solved the problem. However, if no, 
Go to the second question. Is the minuend greater than four and the subtrahend less than five? If so, then do a five complements problem and you've solved it. If no, go to the third question. Can you do a tens complement problem directly? If yes, go ahead and do it. You've solved your problem. However, if no, then pull the subtrahend down and subtract a 10 bead. Congratulations, you've done the subtraction problem. So I'm going to show you one of each of the four kinds of subtraction problems that you could possibly encounter in the course of calculation. So the first problem will be a direct problem such as 4 minus 3. Can I directly subtract the 3? Yes, I do so. The problem is solved. The next problem will be a problem like 5 minus 4. So can I directly subtract the 4? No. Okay, second question. Is the minuend greater than 4? Yes. And is the subterhand less than 5? Yes, I'm subtracting 4. So do a 5's complements problem. So I'm going to subtract 4. Instead, I add the 5 complement, which is 1, and take away the 5. Okay, this third problem is going to be 6 minus 7, but we don't actually deal with negative numbers, so we're going to pretend like it's 16 minus 7. Let's evaluate it. Can I directly subtract 7? No. Does it meet the criteria for a 5's complement? No. Why? Because the subterhand is larger than 5. The third question is, can I directly add the tens complement of 7? Well, what is the tens complement of 7? It is 3. Yeah, I can. It had 3 1 beads. I add the tens complement and I take away the 10 bead with a result of 9. The fourth type of operation will be something like 12 minus 7. It's actually 2 minus 7, but we don't deal with negative numbers in this video, so we'll pretend like there's a at least a 10 bead on the left row. 12 minus 7. Okay, can I directly subtract 7? No. Does it meet the criteria for a 5's complement operation? No. Can I add the 10's complement of 7, which is 3? No. I only have 2 beads left. So, this is a combined 5's, 10's, complements problem, and how you solve it is you simply take the subterhand of 7 and you push it down. See, a 7 is composed of a 5 and a 2 and two 1 beads. You push 5 and two 1 beads down and then take away the 10. That's how you solve a combined 5s and 10s complement problem. Answer is 5. So this was an example of all four types of subtraction problems you will encounter and evaluating each problem from the simplest type to the most complex type as I described. Okay, so that uh, spreadsheet and that flowchart of asking those four questions, that's all intended to help you get the logic for how you evaluate a problem on the abacus. But basically, you learn to evaluate the problem from the simplest kind of operation, which is direct subtraction, to the most complicated operation, which is a combined fives and tens complement type of problem. In actual practice, what happens is when you're dealing with multiple digit subtractions, you learn very quickly through practice to look at a problem and you can immediately tell whether it's going to be one of those three types or four types of operations. This is something you achieve only through practice and it's really not that hard. So with that as background now, let's get into division and we'll see why Repetitive subtraction kind of division, just like that I did on the pinwheel calculator, works pretty darn good for larger numbers on the abacus. Okay, so we're going to use this modern 1-4 Soravan for our uh, practice problem here of division, and it has the automatic clearing button, which is kind of handy. So we're going to do the a problem of 355 divided by 113. That's the same problem we did on the pinwheel calculator. And the way this works is I'm going to put the 355 on, starting in this row, I have a blank rod to separate it, and then this rod will be the count, how many times we subtract it. What we're going to do here is we'll subtract 113 from these rows and we'll keep track of how many times we do it here until what's left is smaller than 113 and we're going to move over one row 
move over here and we'll do the same thing. Subtract 113 until the number left is smaller. We keep a tally of how many times and we just keep doing that down the row and we can get to many decimal places of accuracy with a calculation. And in doing so also we'll be doing a bunch of different versions of subtraction uh, in terms of all the, all the four different uh, types of problems. So let's start out with 113, subtract 1, that's a direct subtraction. Here we have to subtract 1. We don't have 1 to subtract, so we subtract 5 and add back 4. That's a 5's complement operation. And here we're going to subtract 3. We do another 5's complement. So there is the first one. The second one is 1, 1. We're going to subtract 3. We don't have it, so we go add 7, subtract 10. That's the second time. Again, 1, 1, 3. That's a direct subtraction problem. And now we're left with 16, which is too small. So we're going to move over one rod and move our count over one rod. And now we have 160. So we're going to continue subtracting 113, 1, 1. And we don't have 3, so we're going to add the tens complement and subtract a 10, which is subtracting a 5 and adding back a 4, so that's 1. And now we're left with 47, which is too small, so we're going to move over one more rod, and we're just going to continue this as we go. Okay, and now right here, we basically run out of room. We're going to have to go off to another rod here on the right to continue the process, but we got the fraction 355 divided by 113 to... Uh, 3.14159293808. So that's uh, 11 decimal places. So, hey, not too bad for an abacus. This is probably enough accuracy for engineering or science use. So if you're interested in an even larger fraction that approximates pi a little bit more accurately, try 103993 divided by 33102. That'll get you out to nine digits of accuracy to pi, and it's a, another good division exercise using repetitive subtraction. Well, I've done a lot of uh, practice addition problems over the years, but not quite as much in terms of practice subtraction. And so the great thing about this repetitive subtraction technique for division is you not only get to solve complex division problems with a lot of different columns, but in the process of doing it, you're doing practice subtraction. So you can get your memory wheels turning as far as evaluating each subtraction problem and very quickly being able to determine whether it's direct subtraction, fives complements, tens complements, or combined fives and tens complements. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.